Shalom, brothers and sisters. We apologize for the delay. We will be, begin the class every Sabbath at 11 a.m. sharply, uh, beginning next week. Okay? 11 a.m. sharp. So we apologize for the inconvenience. I know it's the Sabbath. A lot of us don't have anything to do but the class anyway right now. But I still want to be respectful of your time and be a little more consistent on this. Consistent. On this. So that you'll know how to go about your day in planning your Sabbaths. All right. All right, all right. We good to go. First, we'll do this Shammai and go directly into the class, right? Shammai Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shammai Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shammai Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah, Ahaya Allah Hayanawa, Ahaya Akhad. Shema Yasha Allah, Ahaya Allah Hayanawa, Ahaya Akhad. Shema Yasha Allah, Ahaya Allah Hayanawa, Ahaya Akhad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. I would like to say shalom, brothers and sisters. Uh, we're here on the Sabbath. All praises be to the Most High. Ahaya in the name of Yeshaya. My name is, of course, a lot of you may already know, Elder Rakashiar. And we have Elder Lawyer today here on your Sabbath day. Now, there are so many things I would like to cover today for the Sabbath with uh, so many uh, events and prophetic scenarios going on in the earth right now. OK, I mean, what you know, what do we deal with first? Right. Uh, I have some news, a few clips that we're going to give out to you all this week uh, that we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, in prophecy, a little that came out of the academy that I believe that a few snippets we're going to give you that everyone must hear as far as some of the news pertaining to what's going on right now. Um but all in all, how many things we have going on right now? We have the election, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> With Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, right? We also have going into uh, November, being at, we're at the end of October right now, we have Halloween, okay? Or what, we, what I would like to call dead day, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how does all these events coincide? The same thing, same time this is going on, they're ramping up drills all, not just throughout the United States, throughout the world, okay? They're also focusing people on the outside of the firmament uh, with uh, what they call solar bursts, claiming that the electrical grid could go down if there's a solar burst, okay, preparing people for uh, the electric going off, knowing that they will soon turn off the grid and lead into an entirely different system that will have the majority of the population begging for the mark of the beast. So you might ask, well, why are we talking about this on the Sabbath day, right? Well, keep in mind, that the Most High gave his people, I'm speaking of our people, the children of Israel, signs. He also gave us understanding of times according to Sabbaths. Okay, so we're on the Sabbath doing what? Prophesying and resolving times in preparation for the coming of our Lord and Savior. Satan know him and the politicians who are under him know that they only have a short time and they're ramping up their program 
all throughout the four corners of the earth against God's people. Same time this is going on, there's an onslaught against the Bible. Uh, uh, it's an orchestrated campaign to discredit or come against this book while evil abound. You think that's a coincidence? No. Think again. The Bible is the only book, brothers and sisters, that resolves what's going on. So how do we quantify a lot of this in preparation and getting our people prepared for what's about to happen and understanding the times? Well, the Bible says it's high time that we awake out of sleep. And hopefully this day, this Sabbath day and the understanding that will come uh, this this lesson that will come throughout the Sabbath through the Sabbath today will allow our people will allow you to do just that not only become awakened but react and deal and do something with that understanding now first and foremost years ago we did a video from Babylon Rome to America Showing you how the Bible shows seamlessly how all three of these culminate from one empire to the next, leading to the modern day America or the modern day Babylon, right? You also seen us through years, and you're going to see more, all praises be to the Most High, our church teaching on the street. Myself, elder, uh, lawyer, Elder Zion Nash, all the elders, even the brother Nadar, who's, who's with us in California now. You've seen us talking about what was coming here to America and the fact that soon our people would need to come out of Babylon altogether. Knowing that the politicians of this earth will systematically and religiously implode Babylon so that all power can shift back to the Vatican, to Rome. When I say the Vatican, they're only the religious wing of this whole thing. There's a religious wing, there's a financial uh, 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 ring, mm -hmm. and there's also a systematic platform politically. So it's all through three phases. It's not just one. A lot of people would like to just point to Rome, Rome, Rome. But it's a system more so than just a religion. OK, so how do we quantify this going into what we call Halloween? Well, first and foremost, brothers and sisters. Everyone everywhere, especially those who are in the United States, must come to grip. With the fact that America was never under God. Not at one point was the land we call America was under God or the, our God, the God of gods, the God of the Hebrews, the God of Israel. Satan ruled America and has been the God of America since its inception. Right? So in order for us to eventually come out of her, we must first understand her and separate ourselves from her in every facet in preparation for what? A clean separation, spiritually and otherwise. Now, this system perpetuates certain religions and certain things that are fun to children, aimed towards women and children, that, that, that do, does what? Socially calls us and bind us to this satanic place. Mm. Right? But in order for the Most High to save us, his people must make a clean break. Right? So when we say, come out of her, my people, yes, America will soon be no more. And for those who believe she will be, I can't speak for them. But the Bible tells us that sooner or later, sooner than later, based on everything we're seeing, it's about to happen. 
Keep in mind, even the elite powers and the Zionists in this earth today, brothers and sisters, keep in mind that they are right out showing the people all over the earth, including the Americans, okay, the Babylonians, quote unquote. They're right out telling them that the electoral system was always a joke, okay? No wonder why you have Bill, uh, uh, what you would call Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump posing together a few days ago with this Jesuit in the middle, Timothy Delane. They're, they're in it all together. Babylon has always been evil. So we're going to go into this today. All right. We're going to see if we can culminate and bring all of this together so that our brothers and sisters out there on this Sabbath and beyond will know what time it is and prepare for what's coming. Right. Let's go to Revelations 18 real quick. Right. And when the Bible says flee Babylon, that's not a doctrine, okay? That's the Bible. The only doctrine that is, is the Bible's doctrine. Okay? Let me make that clear. Okay? And when we teach this, it's not in panic or to leave in haste and all that into, into panic and say, oh, they're doing this. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, this world, even Satan's agents can do nothing to you without permission if you're under the hedge of the Most High. The accuser of our brethren was cast down. He's leading those like Trent, Trump, Hillary, the Zionist. You understand? So Satan, like he asked for permission to touch Job. At that time, he had access and was an accuser of the brethren. He had to ask for permission to come against the righteous. See? So this, when we teach this, it's, it's not for you to fear. If you're under the law, statutes, and commandments and doing what's right under Christ, you have zero to fear. So you can't operate in haste of fear of what the government can do to you. We're not breaking these things down because we fear government. We're showing you these things so that we can prepare for the coming of our, of our Lord and Savior and be able to prophesy beyond Babylon once it's, it has fallen. Okay, let's read it. Revelations. Yes, sir. This is Revelations 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Babylon the great is fallen, it's fallen. Now, more proof that Babylon is totally Fallen and can't get up. It's as if the elite powers in this. Well, I, I wouldn't call them elite. The dirt powers mm -hmm. of this earth. OK. Are laughing in people's face with these events, what they show, these staged events. Showing Hillary Clinton walking down and cameras are strategically put in place, showing her falling. A woman falling. Mm -hmm. Right. They're telling you it, it's all it, it's all being telepath or being promoted throughout the earth and published throughout the earth. What's going on? That lady that would fall. It's the same thing. A lady in red, she falls, right? It talks about the lady at the end, right? Now, and I'm, I'm not saying Hillary Clinton is prophesied. Hillary right. Clinton is Hillary Clinton. I'm just showing you how the Zionists and others do certain things right in your face as if they're as, as if they're telling you what they're doing. They're imploding Babylon. Babylon has run its course. Right. So they are imploding it. So they're using these actors. They're using these front people, okay? The real people you should be looking at are the people that can't get voted in, who can't get voted out, 
who's always there, regardless of what politician is in place, like the Rockefellers, the, the Kissingers, the Rothschilds, the DuPonts, the on and on and on and on, the Hiltons, on and on and on. These people are in place, regardless of the puppets they place before you. Donald Trump is an, is, is an actor. Hillary Clinton is an actor. Okay? So we go in here to show you that they're showing you that, listen, this place is finished. Okay? They're not even putting some, a person before you that can show any similitude of hope. Right? Babylon the Great is fallen. It's fallen, read. And it's become the habitation of devils. And it's become the habitations of devils. So what is the Bible relating to us today, right? What is, it, what is the Most High showing John the Revelator when it says become the habitation of devils? Well, it's showing you that this place that the Bible is prophesying about will be systematically set up to do devil worship, demon, de demonology, evil, wickedness. That Satan, this would be Satan's new Babylon. See? This place would be ran by devils and demons and evil. Right? Go on. And the hold of every foul spirit. Every foul spirit. That means everything that's wrong. Right? Right? Blurred lines you would have. Hmm. No moral compass. Everything the Bible says to do which is moral, it would teach the reverse. It would, it would totally skew gender lines. Totally skew any level of, of any, any understanding of piety. Make it where you don't know which way you're going. Totally confused. Right? Babel. What happened at the Tower of Babel? The tongues was confounded. Confusion. Right? This is what Babylon was set up about, was set up on from the beginning. A matter of fact, the so-called first president of the United States, George Washington, was a satanic mason. And they have a statue with him in Roman garb in the same pose of the satanic Baphomet. OK. They have been putting this in your face all along. It's just been before you all along. They use these systematic Babylonian churches. And I'm going to talk about it in a moment. These systematic Babylonian religious institutions in America. To teach us an alternative reality. OK. That would actually tolerate and bring some level of, of understanding to an evil world. <laughs> it was the religious teachings that had us tolerate this place as God's place, as God's country. See? Anyone in their right mind outside of religion, if you read the Bible, you can clearly see that America is the virgin daughter of Babylon. Okay? But if the churches have been infiltrated by Jesuits, by Romans, the same people who destroyed our people, who, who destroyed God's people in 70 AD, Zionists and Jews, which are Jewish people, which are Romans. See, if they're controlling your education, your churches, they'll make you believe good is evil and evil is good. And the whole, at the whole time, while you're in these churches, systematically destroying your children, making them, the, making them believe that the Bible is just another book. The only book that can resolve the place we're living in. And the imposition against us. Right? So when the Most High says, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Yes, we all see it fall, it, it, it's fallen. Right? But he wouldn't show us this or give us give John this without an answer, brothers and sisters. Right. Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. And now it's being controlled by demons, devils, Satanist. Like your lady in red here. We all know she's a eugenicist. She's a Satanist. She championed Margaret Sanger, which was a eugenicist who had a plan to make it really 
to, to make it a power move for women to think it's okay to destroy and kill their own children. All right? You strong and you have courage if you can kill your baby, right? This systematic psychosis that was taught by Margaret Sanger has killed, what, over how many? Over half a million black babies. Who was behind this? Who championed this? Who celebrated that eugenicist who said we need to kill these black weeds? Hillary Clinton. Okay? She's a top sorceress, a witch. Okay? These are your choices, even though you never really had a choice. Okay? That whole thing in the 60s, when they, when they move the, uh, the civil rights movement from equality or right justice to being able to vote. The Zionists controlled that whole thing to make you believe that that's what we wanted. We never wanted to vote. We wanted to be able to, to protect ourselves and have our own without an outside influence destroying us internally. That's what we desire. They moved the pendulum into a system that they were controlling already. See? Do you want to vote in Babylon? Do you want to become Babylonian? See? Let me give you the right to become even more evil and wicked and confused. See? So voting, you, you never had a choice. No soon as they gave you the right to vote, what did they do? Well, they brought in the, uh, the electoral, what? It's called an, an electoral college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that now, the popular vote will never win. And then if, if, if you find a way to, to get around that barrier, that evil, imp, that, that evil thing they've put before you so that the votes, they can still control the vote, then they'll tell you, well, we got super delegates. Mm -hmm. who, who are they? <laughs> you never had a choice. Okay? You never had a choice. We were brought to America as a curse, okay? okay? That's the whole deal. We were meant to be servants until we're freed according to prophecy, okay? Now we're at the end of the times the Gentiles will rule and their demons and their gods will rule over us. We're at the end of that now. Now the alternative is what the Most High is showing us here in Revelations, to come back. Follow his laws, statutes, commandments. Become righteous in an unrighteous world. Deny everything this system is pushing on us. Deny it all. Right? Come on, other lawyer. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Is fallen, it's fallen. And has become the habitation of devils. And has become an habitation of devils. There's demons ruling America and the Western world. Now, when we talk about Babylon, we're talking about a system in place. All right? Even the atheists are religious. See? The only reason they became atheists is so that they can be the fundamental foundation to attack the Bible. See? That was their whole deal. But even they are under a religious Babylonian understanding because they're behind the banking systems, which is Babylonian. They're behind the systematic rule of Rome, uh, colonizing other countries, the, the patriotic way of the Western world. That's all a religion, brothers and sisters. So the atheist is just a faction that was, that was carved out by Zionists to attack people who believe the Bible. That's all it was. Okay. You rarely hear atheists speaking against any other religions that believe in God. Their sole focus is, to, is for those who are upholding the book who can resolve everything. Us. The children of Israel. Okay? Come on, let's go. In the hold of every foul spirit, in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Read on. Verse 3. 
For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations have participated in the evil of Babylon, which was a Masonic build from its inception, which was under Satan's authority from the beginning. Okay. Read. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And all nations have become rich buying into the satanic system, the new Babylon. Read the fourth verse. Verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Saying what? Come out of her, my people. Right before the Most High destroyed any empire, he warned the righteous. Okay? We can go on and on and on. We can go back to the time of Christ before the message came to John the Revelator. And Christ was letting us know, as the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then he talked about Lot. Don't be caught out there like Lot's wife. He was t- he, they were giving us understandings how to resolve Babylon mm-hmm. in our time. Don't be like, like Lot's wife. She looked back. Her heart was still joined to Satan. One moment. One moment. Okay. Okay, let's go again here. Latin, go to Revelations 18 and 4 again. Revelations chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, What? Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. See? Same as, as, as I've mentioned a little earlier here. Okay. Christ gave us those same warnings. He was telling the disciples that eventually the Romans are going to come against us. The Romans will come against us. He kept telling us. Okay, that they will compass us around and eventually destroy us. And that happened in 70 AD. And he told the people, listen, don't be like Lot, Lot's wife. Don't be like Light's wife and turn around and desire that evil place. So when people claim that fleeing Babylon is a doctrine, it's unlearned. Okay, because the Bible tells us that there will be a great destruction in Babylon that's coming. Okay, there will be. Every empire suffered a serious Destruction. Okay. Look at what happened in Egypt. The plagues. That enslaved God's people. What place have done more evil to us. Than the western world. Than Babylon. Okay. So if he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah With their sodomitish ways. Okay. And he destroyed Egypt. What do you think he's going to do to the western world? What do you think he's going to do to America? So this is a warning also to the nations. He's telling his people, the people he loved, the people that are following his commandments, hey, come out of her. 
Separate yourself from her. I'm about to destroy her. Okay, that's what the Most High is saying. Read. Verse 5, or it's like it, the rest of verse 4. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers of her sins. And I want to show you something real quick, brothers and sisters. To show you that Babylon extends from Rome, right? A few years ago, we showed this a few years ago, showing you the ancient Tower of Babel on your left, unbuilt, and the new parliament of the EU on your right, showing you a, a, what I would call a modern construct of the fallen or the unfinished Babylonian Tower. See? So they, are, they picked up from where ancient Babylon left off. Can you see this? To build a hub, a system, a world system, a one world order that would exalt the God who gave them their power. Okay? Satan is the God of the EU, of America, has always been over the religions, whether it be the Seventh-day Adventist Church, whether it be the Jehovah Witness Church, whether it be the Mormon Church, the Church of Latter-day Saints, whether it be the Baptist Church, the Pentecostal churches, whether it be your modern-day non-denomination churches, they all have they all have some piece of the Babylonian teachings in their religions. Even those that reject Rome, like the Seventh-day Adventists. Okay? These are all evil and wicked harlot houses, according to the book of Revelations. They stem from the mother of harlots. The mother is Rome. Rome is wasn't just in Italy. It wasn't just a little city, okay? It's an idea that spreads through conquest and absorbs the rest of the world. That was the whole point of Rome from its inception, okay? Now, we just covered that in uh, the last two lessons in the academy. But now... We understand that Rome, the fourth beast, absorbed all the power religions of ancient Babylon, ancient Egypt, Egypt and all that, and it became all of them wrapped into one. America is the country, the daughter of Babylon, or the extension of when Rome's deadly wound was healed. America embodied all of them and became a superpower in a shorter time in a short space, okay? So now, they have accomplished their agendas in bringing the whole world under the fear of Rome's rule. They have now set bases, military bases, all throughout the four corners of the earth. They have systematically, through their religious financial system, sucked all the resources and indebted every country on earth, okay? <laughs> they no longer need Babylon now. They have done it. They've used Babylon and tricked us in churches into joining their militaries and to thinking we were defending God's land. They used us. And we went throughout all of the world fighting these satanic battles that would one day turn around towards us, where we are now. The same black people who have fought in all their wars for them and have did their conquest are now labeled terrorists. Okay? Wake up, brothers and sisters. This is why the Most High is saying, listen, you better wake up and come out of it. You better separate yourself. You better follow me. Where one must ask permission to touch you, okay? You must get under the hedge, brothers and sisters. That's, that's what this is really about, okay? 
Come on. Revelations 18 and 4. And I heard a, a, another voice from heaven saying, Come on. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Because if you don't come out of her, you're going to receive the plagues of her. All of it. Let's go to the, through the plagues for people who believe that coming out of her is spiritual. All right. And guess what? There is a spiritual coming out of her first. Okay. We're not minimizing that. You must separate yourself first spiritually from her if you're living amongst her. But that's the first phase. That spiritual disconnect is preparing you to do what? To do what? To be to have that relationship severed altogether, right? I like to uh, give an example like a relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, you may be living in the same house, but when two people are done with each other, they tend to separate and and not deal with each other and deal with the inconvenience until they can be apart, right? <laughs> That's what you see in this world. You see people who check out amongst each other and. Through whatever finances, issues, whatever, they bear each other. But really, their heart been going a long time from the relationship. So that's the example we can give for those who really can't afford to go places or don't have a direction right now. Keep in mind, the most none of crisis is lost. So your your circumstance right now will not dictate how this thing will play out. For any of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the right. best the best thing we can do is to come out of us spiritually if we don't have the means to do so and not participate with her. So that now the most high's protection covers his people, cover the righteous. And through that cover, the angels will show you a way. Then the ideas will come. Mm -hmm. You will link into the church, you'll start doing things. Where two or more to gather and a way will, will be made that, that didn't come to mind before. See? Right? Where you at, Elder Lawyer? Revelations 18 and 8. Come on. With the plagues. Here's the plagues. Now, if you don't come out of it, eventually you'll suffer the plagues according to Revelations, right? Come on. Revelations 18 and 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death. Death. In mourning. And mourning. And famine. Famine. And she shall be utterly burnt with fire. According to the Bible, that's the future of the daughter of Babylon. Eventually, she will go down with, by fire. And that's what's about to go down. Now, it, it, we, we probably have a few years before it actually happens. But no society, no empire in history, okay, ever in history, were able to avoid its prophecy. No empire, okay. When, when our people were under the Babylonian and Assyrian Empire, they had a time, we, they only had a certain time before it would go to the next empire or the next empire up until the time in which the Most High would look to free and awaken his people, the time we have now. And no prior empire was able to escape the prophecies concerning their fall and the power going from one nation to the next nation that was prophesied in the book of Daniels. No empire have escaped their prophecy. So what makes you think America, America, America will? This is what's coming to America according to the Bible. OK. And we talk about Babylon, I want because this this embodies everything we're dealing with, with coming into the so-called elections that's coming into how before the elections they worship the dead and all that. It's all one system. It's all one religion. There's no separation between the churches that are celebrating Halloween and the political systems and what they plan on certain days. And the participation of Halloween and all that with our children and families. It's all one religious action under Satan. But in order to understand that, 
we have to go back to ancient Babylon. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, go through a few references, okay? All right? Now, what we'll do is make sure some of these references, you know, once uploaded, will be there where you can actually go into some of these sources yourself, okay? But what we have here is uh, the, pagan, the, the pagan book of days, okay? Now, brothers and sisters, this book, this book here, the Pagan Book of Days, is proof that all the, the uh, holy days you're following today are being masked mm -hmm. by our modern-day politicians and by, by our, and by our mo modern-day controllers to make you believe it's a day that you can relate to in history or in American history and all that. It's a lie, okay? It's a lie. These days were worshipped in ancient Rome, and before ancient Rome, they were worshipped, I'm speaking of all the holy days, they were worshipped in ancient Babylon, ancient Egypt. Okay? Now here's the piece. I wanted to mention this real quick while it's in mind. Mm -hmm. A lot of those in the so-called conscious community come against the Bible because they claim, well, a lot of, there's a lot of similarities in some of these stories of ancient Egypt and ancient Kemet and all that. See, they are misguided. Why? Because they believe that the Romans religion of Christianity is being taught from the Bible. So when they see those, th those religious similarities of Babylon and Egypt, they relate it to the Bible. Mm -hmm. When Christ's stories and the stories in the Bible have nothing to do with those similarities. These are lies and doctrines that were taught by the Romans. And through that, through that idea, through their misunderstandings, they don't view the Bible in its proper context. Okay? Egypt, believe it or not, ancient Egypt and everything ancient Egypt has and what they were came from Babylon. Okay? The Tower of Babel. Okay? So we're going to go and we're going to bring you from... Take you to the past, back to the past, and we're going to bring you up to date on where we are today, right? Can you see that, lawyer? Yes, sir. Okay, sir, this, is from, this is from Revelations Illustrated. You, you have the two Babylons? Here's some of the references we're going to use real quick. The two Babylons. The pagan days, the pagan book of days, right? And we're going to give you some more references we're going to read here. Another reference. These are old references. Early 20th century. Some even before then. Where uh, among the scholars and universities, there were records and references that proved back then that this is a satanic Babylonian system. Okay? Uh, even when you, we look at the political, mm -hmm. the political construct, like Democrats, Republics, the senators, all the, it's all a religion, brothers and sisters. So there's no separation b between church and state. They just tell you that because that's another way they can divide the population. Okay? Divide and conquer, right? Now, we're going to read a few quotes. Here's a quote. Elder lawyer right here. Mm -hmm. Much better. Right, that's better? Yes, sir. And this is from Revelations Illustrated, made plain, page 224. Read that. It says, in ancient days, Satan seemed to make Babylon the capital of his evil, evil operation. In ancient days, Satan seemed to make Babylon the capital of its evil operation. Go on. From this headquarters was started false religion. And from those headquarters which means that foundation, that headquarters they, they made in ancient Babylon under Nimrod and Satan, that became the headquarters of false religion. Now, at that time, there was one speech, one tongue, and all the nations were working together under one program to get Satan back out beyond the firmament. Okay? Now, our people, our forefathers, which is the line of Noah, Shem, okay, Abraham, from Eber and Peleg, 
Okay, this was the line that would keep things pure against the false gods, against the false religions. Okay, now finish reading, Elder Lawyer. Uh, moving on, it says here. Now, this is where we're going. We're going into this book here. The two Babylons, which Jesuits and Jewish people will claim it's not credible. And just because they claim something is not credible doesn't make it not credible. They're not credible. OK. Here it is. The two Babylons. Uh Read this quote here where it says, in the two Babylons, right? Mm -hmm. Read it. It says, the Tower of Babel was actually the worship of Satan in the form of fire. Worship of Satan in the form of fire. Read. The sun. The sun. And the serpent. And the serpent. All right. So, ancient Babylon began the worship of Sunday. See? Sunday was a worship of Satan. OK. And they worshiped him as what? As a form of fire, because the cherubs, the cherubims or the angels in heaven were what? Or they are what? Amongst the stones of fire made out of, made out of what we call in this earth, pure hydrogen fire. So when he was hurled to the earth like a meteor, it was like a stream in fire coming to the earth. OK, it wasn't a rock from another planet. It was Satan and the angels that was hurled to this earth. And so they worshiped that. They worshiped that fire. They worship what they would call his 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 light. Him being illuminated as an angel with technology and understanding beyond our realm. He could teach uh, this earth the pure what good and evil science beyond our realm of education. So through this, he was a god to be worshipped in ancient Babylon, right? Read on. It says, however, Satan worship could not be done openly because of the many who still believed in the true God of Noah. See that? So secretly, those in high position during the time of the, of the building of Babel, secretly, they knew, those in high regard, knew that this was a construct and a religion that was tilted towards or aimed towards worshiping Satan. But they had to do this in secret from amongst the regular builders because the regular builders believe all along that they were worshiping the God of Noah. They knew there was only one true God. So they were tricked into believing that this tower was God's tower. The same way a lot of churches and institutions today, we believe because there's good people who, who we deem or think that are good people, but they're only tricking us through psychology with how they interact. But they're really evil and wicked people with a demented agenda against the world. These are your elites. Who, who they'll smile with you, hug a child, have a commercial with violins behind it. But really, they're Luciferians. They're Babylonian Luciferian agents. See? Here's the trickery. In order for us to come out of Babylon, we must first understand what Babylon is and Satan's agent so that we can, so that our heart is not endeared uh, towards or merge with any of this right it says right here the Tower of Babel was actually the worship of, of Satan in the form of fire right however Satan worship cannot be done openly because of the many who still believe in the true God of Noah come on elder lawyer so a mystery religion began at Babel where Satan could be worshipped in secret. So the mystery religion is Babylon, see? And it's no different than the mystery religion of masonry today, okay? The mystery religion goes right back to the Tower of Babel, brothers and sisters. It's having those of influence in control of the population, see? Totally, totally deceiving those that are under them. 
and secret worships of Satan. That's why eventually we see Revelation 18. The Most High is saying, listen, come out of them, my people. I'm going to take it down. The only way to break the delusion once and for all is to, is to totally, utterly destroy the dream. Destroy the illusion so that those that haven't woke up can wake up. See? Now, here's a, now that reference also came from the Larux brothers, 1959, where they talk, talk about Neptune, which is a fallen god, right? It's a book called Neptune, right? Read what it says here. It says, uh, the researches of modern writers. The research of modern writers said what? Uniformly regard Babylon as the cradle of ancient paganism. So those that worship the fallen gods admit in their records that what? They deem Babylon the what? The cradle of ancient paganism. Okay? Polytheism, which is the worship of many gods. Why? Because Satan didn't fall by himself. One third of the angels ruled under him within the firmament, within this construct. So all of these gods were worshipped in ancient civilizations, okay, beginning on this side of the flood with Babylon, right? Read what it says here, right? And this book, okay, one moment, make sure I have it here. Here's another book called Nimrod and False Religion, and it's adopted by the Bible Story, Volume 1, by Basil Wolverton. And this is published by the Ambassador College Press. Read this here. It says, there in ancient Babylon were born the false beliefs that have warmed Wormed. The ways that have wormed their way into almost every religion. Come on. Even today, millions and millions of people who may want to live according to the right ways are not aware that the manner of worship follows very closely, closely that of ancient idol worship and pagan rites begun at Babylon. Mm -hmm. So even those who want to do right are not aware that what they do right is still wicked and evil. They were taught that Sunday worship was good. It's evil. Mm -hmm. See? Sunday worship was in pure defiance of, uh, against the God of the Bible. Who said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Right? And I see so many people, when you talk about the Sabbath to them, they were, well, that's for the Jews. Well, wasn't Christ from the tribe of Judah? If that's for the Jews and Christ was a Jew, then why are you worshiping Sunday then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Come on. People today calling themselves Christians keep the Babylonian festivals. What festivals Babylonian festivals they keep? Come on. Of the solstice at Christmas and Easter, mm. which is the festival of Ishtar. Now, this is in their records, their books, their universities. They know that Christians keep the Babylonian festivals of the Sultis at Christmas, Easter, which is the festival of Ishtar, the ancient fertility, fertility goddess of Babylon. Right? Right? Now, let's get a few more. Right? This is from uh, the Salk Brothers Neptune. Okay. Matter of fact, let's go here. Two Babylons, Alexander the Hislop, page 99. Read it. It says Babylon was, at that time, the center of, civilized, of the civilized world. Same thing it said in the other record. Read. And thus paganism had opportunities of sending forth its debased counterfeit of the truth to all the ends of the earth. So they would have a fake religion from Babylon after the splitting of the tongues that will be spread throughout the four corners of the earth. So what happens if God's people, the children of Israel, who didn't follow these things, fall 
through a curse. Eventually, these people would be spread throughout the four corners of the earth and do what? You got it. Be spread and get deceived by these Gentile Babylonian religions. And they would begin to believe, our people would be, be, begin to believe this was always the truth. Not relating our condition following other nations' religions, not relating that action to a curse. <laughs> okay? Not relating that. How can you get back to God after captivity following the nations who have enslaved you? Right. So we must go back to what it was before we fell. We must come back to the laws. Right. Follow the Sabbath. Right. Follow his commandments. Right. Now, why did I go into this? Well, last week we went into uh, in the academy. First, we went into who is Edom showing Edom two weeks ago linked with the gods or the God Seer, right? And that God Seer, when it show you in record, we show it in the academy, that God Seer is Yahweh, right? Well, when you look at the empires in Daniel's brothers and sisters, right? All the way down, the, uh, the Babylonian Assyrian, Persian Medo, Greek, Roman Empire. Well, that same God, was worshipped all the way up until the Romans ruled, okay? And they culminated the same ideologies and merged it with their new religion, which is what you would call the universal religion of the church, the Roman Catholic Church. It was just Babylonian, but had a little bit of all the nuances, nuances, of all the beasts or all the nations that ruled us, okay, had all the nuances of all these empires so that they could rule us up until the time of Christ, which is Edom, Edomites, okay, Romans, right? Now, when you look at this, when they found us or when they, when they barred it for us and enslaved us and and sold us, like it says in Deuteronomy 28, to, to different places to build their new Egypt, to build their new Babylon, to build their new tower, right? When they did this, they knew that we were religious Hebrews. They knew that it was in our culture. They knew it was in our nature to follow the God of the Hebrews. So that, no, no way they could separate that from us. We're spiritually drawn to this book, the Bible, and the Hebrew scrolls, and to the belief of a God, the one true God. They couldn't take that away from us. So what they did was they allowed us to continue in the book as long as they, as long as they could be the authority and control the narrative, the, the, the narrative and the doctrine of how we view the book, right? So here it is. So in the church, they would teach us Sunday worship and the Babylonian rule and the Babylonian evil of, of ancient Babylon. Outside of the church, okay, they would teach us certain religious holy days and certain religious practices that would have us not only uh, deal with the worships on Sunday, but the social actions of Romans, which were evil, would be our way of life going forward. Okay, let me show you. What's today's date? Uh, the 28th. Today's the 28th, right? Right? Let's get this book real quick. Right? And I need you to get... Uh, we're going into Halloween, right? Yes, sir. Get it out of here real quick. October 31st. Right? October 31st. You got it? Yes, sir. This is uh, page 121 of the Pagan Book of Days. Come on. It says, the 31st of October. 
Known as Sam Hain Eve. Known as what? Sam Hain Eve. Sam Hain Eve. Right? Halloween. Halloween. Goddess month of Sam Hain commences. It goes on to state the feast of Sam Hain marks the onset of a darker, more introspective time of year when access to the o- other world is easier than usual. When the access to the other world is easier than usual. It's speaking of the satanic, demonic world. Gates opening for demons, right? But these demons can only get hosts through what? Participation. Mm-hmm. This is a time of witches, druids, sorcerers, right? Right? They promote this, Right? Throughout South America. Look at this. Mm. Look at this. Our people in South America worshiping the dead, right? Why are they doing it today? Well, they were taken over by the same Romans. Here it is. This is, a, this is an East Indian. They're, they're in a cemetery worshiping the dead, right? A 